All right, welcome back to Study Ball. And this isn't really particularly about the Denver Broncos, although they're going to be the subject of today's Study Ball. And we have a saying where I coach is that we're never going to attack a person, but we're always going to attack a problem. Never attack a person, always attack a problem. In other words, man, you might be the focus of a problem. The Denver Broncos today are the focus of our issues, but it's not really about the Denver Broncos. This is about details, being able to clean up the details. You want to be successful in the National Football League. You've got to have attention to detail. You got to know what you're doing in play design. You've got to have detail in what you're doing on the football field. You got to be detailed as a quarterback to understand timing, anticipation, what you're looking at. All of those little details are the difference between winning and losing when you're playing at the highest level where parity is at a premium. So any time out, you can get beat if you don't have the attention to detail. So we're going to take a look at the Denver Broncos today from last Thursday night. And we're just going to look at the details. We're going to take 12, 13 different plays and just talk about little details that make huge differences in the course of the game. 17-14 game. All the Broncos needed was a play here, play there to go a little bit differently. And they win that game instead of losing. But to me, it all comes down to the details. Details, details, details. So again, first third down of the game, third and seven or eight, you see the sticks right here. Okay, and so we're gonna run a route here where one receiver goes here and the second receiver goes here. So, I mean, just, just first and foremost, like, what are we doing? What's quarterback supposed to do here, right? With third and seven, we're trying to pick this up. Why do we have two guys running routes where one guy can cover them within four yards of each other. No idea. So we got two guys going over there. We got a shallow coming here. Teddy Bridgewater does the only thing that he can do is hit the shallow, hit that guy in the progression, and hope this guy gets the first down. But man, this is third down. If I'm a quarterback, I'm sitting here going, what are we doing? I, and I don't really know what the route is supposed to be. I don't know if this guy's supposed to push deeper, and then we get some separation. I really don't know what we're trying to do here, but here we are, first third down of a game in a big game, and we got a bunch of guys, lack of spacing, lack of details, and now we're punting the football. All right, there's gonna be an interception here by Teddy Bridgewater. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna run an in route here and a post route over the top. Love pe people, a lot of people love to run this particular route. So you get a quarters coverage, this guy's deep, this guy's playing a quarters, Okay, we're looking to see if this guy jumps the end. If he jumps the end, we go over the top for the post. Okay, this guy doesn't jump the end, then we have to progress forward. Now, here's what I'm going to tell you quarterbacks out there, okay, coaches out there. First thing we got to see is the distance between these two guys. Okay, so right now we're at 15 yards from a safety. That's a really deep safety in quarters for where he's going to start. This guy's probably not even run a 15 yard route here so it's probably a 12 yard route so we've already got him beat based on depth alone right there okay so that's what we need to see initial depth okay and then on the snap watch him drop 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 okay so now we're about 20 yards okay 20 plus yards from the ball 20 plus yards from the ball okay so i've got to see that distance then i've got to see his initial move which is depth right here if i'm a quarterback and i'm saying to myself as long as he's not jumping and staying squatted here and jumping this, I'm Xing out the post. The post is over, it's done with based on his initial movement and I've got to get off of it. Now at the top of this, you'll see safety turns his hips like he's going to jump the end. That's what Teddy Bridgewater sees. And so he's going to throw the post. The problem is you got to see this too. You got to see that eight yards, nine yards difference between the two and say, he is not jumping the in, he's not taking the in away, and he's so deep that even if he turns his hips that way when I throw the post, he can get back to the post and intercept it. I see exactly what Teddy's seeing. Hips turn right there, boom. Oh, he turned, now I can take the post over the top. Well, you gotta understand initial depth if you're going to make that play. So what should we do right here, okay? They're gonna roll to a cover six, quarters, quarters, and then half over here. We've got a corner route, and a flat route along with this in and post right here. So I'm coming out and I'm looking at this safety. This safety is tight enough first and foremost, about 12 yards. Okay, I'm gonna eye him. As long as he doesn't just keep going back and he settles his feet, I got my shot over the top. 
Soon as he gets so much depth that he's not a factor anymore, I'm getting off of that right now, and I should be reading this high low over here off of this corner, and you'll see. Come off, see the depth right there, boom, go to backside, go to the backside. We go to the backside right here, we got this and this off of this defender. You tell me, you've got one of the two, we get a completion, we don't have an interception. That play could be the difference in a game right there. See the depth of that safety, not just the movement. Body language, but also initial position. Also what he does after the snap, playing quarterback, you gotta see all of that stuff. Okay, so here we've got play that we call wrap. Little hook right here, and an in over the top. So we get this look and you're going to this side, you say the safety's deep enough that we can beat him on the wrap. Eyes on this guy right here. It's a high low on that guy. But always wanna think top down because we never wanna be late on the deeper throw. We can always recover back to the underneath throw if this guy takes away the deep one, but we never wanna be late for the deep one. So as I'm coming out, eyes are over here. Do you see Teddy? Teddy's looking to try to take this one first instead of setting to take this one first. Sets to take that one first, he lets this ball go right here, we got a completion. Because he sets to throw this one first, he tries to get back inside, and he can't get there, he's late, but you see where it's coming, that guy's moving, boom, ball out of your hands right here. Okay, we're always trying to get width and depth of this guy, so that's why this hook comes out here. If this guy gets width, that's all we're looking for. If he gets width right here, boom, we're right back inside to the end. He stays in his position, he doesn't get width, and he just holds right here. Now we throw it away from him, we make this read easy. Teddy's gotta be set to throw the in right there. Got the movement, ball should be out, we got a completion, we're moving the chains, and we're going. Instead, it becomes a scramble and a throwaway. All right. Coming back on this particular play right here, and it's one thing that I hate, okay? So, protection here, one, two, three, four, and five for the offensive lineman. The back's over here. Now, he could be one of two things, but you have to assume he's over here. He's taken this guy, so we're hot off of anybody over here. Now, we're going to chip this tight end on Miles Garrett, but we don't have those other guys picked up. So, you'll see... Right? We turn over here, we get one of these guys. Another guy's coming. Now maybe the back's supposed to get over here and help. I'm not sure. If he is, all good. If not, then quarterback needs to have a hot. So instead of chipping here, we need to get out. Or instead of chipping here, we've got to protect him and protect the other guys at the quarterback and throw it down the field because you'll see there are no quick throws on this particular play. So we've got a free hitter coming right here on Teddy Bridgewater. He's got nobody that's into his route at this particular time. Again, this is either a bad protection, giving the quarterback no hot in a situation where we could be hot, or it's a bad job by the back who's supposed to scan one to two and pick that guy up so the quarterback can read it down the field and make a play. I don't know. You tell me. I don't know which one it is, but now Teddy Bridgewater is getting a sack, having to throw this ball away instead of being able to hold it to take the shot down the field that he wants to take. Little things, little things, details. Everything is about details. Okay, now there's a little thing here. We're gonna run a go route up here. Okay, go route up here. So he has to turn back inside because the guy flips open and takes away the outside, no problem. This guy recovers, now he goes back to the outside. This is for the receivers here. Receivers, now here's what we don't wanna do on a go route. You don't want to leave that much space between you and the defender. That much space is a bad thing on a go route. On a go route, you want to squeeze. You want to lean on top of that defender. So we always say that. Squeeze. Okay, so you got to jump back outside. No problem. Squeeze him. Squeeze him. Hold him inside so the quarterback can throw the ball out here. We like to say hold four yards from the sideline so the quarterback can throw the ball out there. The defender can stay inside and you can catch it over your outside shoulder. Okay, here, he doesn't do that. He goes back outside, he runs to the sideline, he keeps all that space between him and the defender. The defender just rides him out of bounds and there's no chance to make this throw when you take away that space. So I don't have any problem with the release. Back outside, great, all that's good. Now, just stay tight and squeeze him. 
Squeeze him and give your quarterback a chance. No chance right here. Little things, little details that leads to no opportunity for a big play. Uh, you guys tell me on this one, all right? Davion Clowney right here. Uh, he's a pretty good pass rusher. He's a defensive lineman. What protection do we have where we're going to bring all of our offensive linemen away from Jadavion Clowney, who's a defensive end. We're going to fake to the back on that side, and then we're going to try to set up back here. Now, if it's a naked, I get it. We do that. We got a naked, but this is not a naked because you know, because you have no quick throw. There's no throw out the back side. So Jadavion Clowney comes here, and Teddy Bridgewater coming back looking to set up. We leave a defensive end free on him. Now, he does a great job of buying time and still hitting this, but you see, the route is boom, boom. All right, we got two deep routes on this play. There's no way they're leaving a defensive end free or should be leaving a defensive end free on this protection in this particular play. But they bust this one. Jadavion Clowney's chasing him around, makes this tough. And again, he makes a great play and salvages it. But details, man, how do you not block Clowney? How do you not block a defensive end on a pass protection, a drop back, drop back pass protection? I have no idea. All right, we're going to run a little play right here where it's an out, and then we're going to run sticks. Outs and sticks, okay? Interesting thing here, okay? We got outs on the outside. So, Teddy Bridgewater, you're seeing this, corner off, corner off. You like both sides, okay? Quarterbacks, little things, little things. Now, not everybody's going to see this, but I just want you to see body language of 22, body language of 23. Okay, so we're going to have the same concept on both sides. Okay, the only guy with the corners off that can take away this out is going to be that outside linebacker. It's the only guy that can take it away. So I'm looking at those guys. Once I got corners off, I'm looking at those guys. And I'm looking at the guy that has his hips turned inside here, knowing that there's no way he's going to be able to turn his hips, run over, and cover my guy from the outside. This guy doesn't have his hips turned. This guy's hips are open and actually turned to go outside. So first thing I say to myself, even both sides, concepts, same both sides, I'm going down here where this guy's body language tells me that he can't cover it. Okay, so you see it right there. He turns back to the inside. This guy's a steal. This guy matches right to it on the outside, takes that one away. Okay, all right, so you didn't see that. No problem, because the rest of this play is even. So if he reads over here, he's probably throwing the out. Reads over here, this guy matches to the out, so I gotta work to the inside. But here's the thing that I talk about with details. Now, I don't know what they're taught, but I want you to see the tight end down here breaks out of this. This receiver up top turns inside, okay? Why is he turning inside? Is that what we're telling him to do? Why would we tell him to do that? Because I know the only guy that can take this away is the outside linebacker. So if he leaves to take that away, the next guy that's a problem is an inside guy. So why would I turn back to the inside here? Now, it might be a read by the wide receiver. Me, I'm going here, boom, breaking out. So now this guy matches to me. I got an opportunity to throw the football away from him if this guy wants to buzz out underneath it. So instead, I'm going to turn inside. I turn right to the defender. This guy's matched to no dice. This guy turns inside instead of outside, and you see the little window that's outside, no dice. Now your quarterback's in a bind. Was he supposed to go outside? Was he supposed to read it? If he reads it, he catches the football right there. Like I said, go down to this side, you do this. He turns outside and then he's gonna read this guy and settle there, okay? I'm okay with the reads, but you gotta understand what we're reading. What helps my quarterback? What's my issue right here? And we gotta see that. So to me, I'm always telling this guy to turn outside. I can live with it. He can turn outside like this and then settle if he sees somebody, but stay away from the guy that gives me an issue. That guy is the only guy that can take away the out. If he takes away the out, this guy is the only guy that can take away the stick. I want to stay away from him with my stem and we'd have an easy completion right here. Instead, we got to run. Now we salvage it and we make a play, but it's details. No guarantees you're going to get that play on the back end. Uh, details right here. Details, details, details. Okay, so we're going to run basically an under combination to this side. Boom. Okay, and we're going to run 
what we call popcorn to this side. Okay, so it's flat. All right, so what we're looking for here is a situation where this corner, okay, has to cover deep. Now we could be looking for this with man as well. Um, okay, so he's in man. We know the back's coming to the flat. And actually, as he's running this, he's actually running a stick route, not a pop route. So he's coming inside, allowing this guy to go outside, and then we got the corner over the top. All right, so a couple things here. First thing is awareness by this guy right here, that I'm coming inside and my back's coming outside, and I've got an opportunity in man-to-man -man coverage. Okay, one covers one, two cover two, three covers three. All right, so I know that. So if I'm a receiver, I know, hey, I'm going to seam release in here knowing this guy might be covering the back. Now, I'm not going to go out of my way. I'm not going to run into him. I'm not going to do all that stuff. I'm just going to be aware of who the guy is covering the back. So when I come down to run my route, I see him. I'm going to stay under him. Then I'm going to push up, force him to go through me. And if nothing else, I'm going to pick for my back. Instead, you see him come down. He comes down. He avoids it. He allows that guy to run through. And now they match to everything and bunch everything up there. And there is no chance for a play to that side. When we had a great opportunity to be able to rub him, I would love for this corner route to go outside as well. So outside, seam, get this guy to rub, and we got an easy throw to the flat. Okay, we don't do that. So as a quarterback, what's the one thing that I need to know? One thing I need to know is it looks like one, two, three. And then on this side, it looks like one, two. So this guy right here, what does that guy do? It's called one cop. This linebacker right here is playing the cop uh, in this particular case. And, and he's trying to sit in the middle and read the quarterback's eyes, read the routes, and take somebody away. So if I'm reading this, we can go out to the front side. But for me, I always want to eye this guy and see what he's doing if I have the opportunity. So I get a situation where I get him to move that way. Now I've got two on two back to this side. You see this right here. Got a great opportunity there, great opportunity there for the completion, simply based on what they're doing with the cops and robbers. And here's the beautiful thing, is they got two inside breaking routes. On cop, these guys are usually gonna play outside because they know they've got help inside. So even if I went to that side, and number four goes to this side, he can't cover both of them. So if he comes to this side and drops deep and covers the end, replace to this. He drops to this side and covers the little under from the outside, I replace to the end on the front side and I got a great opportunity to backside. Now, should be good either way. If we're running the details, we're rubbing that guy, we're understanding what our responsibility is front side, we should have opportunities to make a play, but not great details leads to another sack in that situation. Okay, here's another one. Okay, so we've got the similar type play here. We got an out and we got a flat. Okay, we always like this play. We've got to go out here. We like this play anytime the corner is off, okay, which he's going to have here. Corner's off and we say to ourselves, okay, this guy has to go cover the flat. Then this guy back here has got to cover the stick. So I should get leverage to that side one way or another. So it's not a bad play to that side, but we also have a play to the back side, that same similar play that we just ran here with an under. So what I'm saying to myself as I come out of this as a quarterback is here's the guy that this play hinges on right here. If this guy drops straight back, then this guy's in a bind. He can't cover both the flat and the stick. My advantage is front side. If this guy pushes front side to take that away. Now this guy is in a bind because he can't cover over and under. So I'm reading number four right off the bat. He moves strong right there. Get my eyes backside. Where's the throw? That might be the throw. Feely takes it away. Here's the throw right there. Instead of trying to force it into two guys over here and try to make a play where they're right there to make the tackle, understand what you're reading, understand your issue, understand your guy, Number four dictates everything on that particular play. Details, details, details. All right, here's another one. Same play they had before. Here, push up, we got a flat right here. And instead of pushing out, so if he pushes out, this guy's in a bind, he can either take the flat or he stays in here and takes the stick. 
and we've got a chance. Instead, we're going to come up again and we're going to turn inside. So is that route design? Is that mistake by the receiver? I don't know. Turns inside. What happens again? This guy's pushing from the inside, which is the only place he's going to push from. He's going to push from the inside and he takes that away because the quarterback has no opportunity to throw it on the outside number. So just seam, push up, break out. Get the separation, force this guy to make a decision. In worst case scenario, we're throwing it outside away from the defender and we've got a shot. Instead, we turn right into coverage. We don't have anything. We force our quarterback to get all the way through his progression. Nice job there to get to number four and at least get a completion even though it's only for two yards. All right, now we're down in the red zone. Okay, it's a tight game. We need all the points that we can get. So we're going to run a little Poco concept. Post, corner, flat right here. All right, great concept down here for everybody. All right, so you're gonna watch this play out. You're gonna watch this play out. Okay, you got the post. We get the corner to go with them. Awesome. Now we got a high low on this defender right here. But you'll notice this defender right here, he's sitting there playing about seven, eight yards, and he's able to take away the corner. We're trying to throw the flat. He's gonna come up and cover the flat as well. He's gonna have the ability to cover both of them, even though the right read is to the flat. There's no question about it. But here's the details I'm talking about. Ball is on the 20 yard line, okay? We're running a corner route. Nobody ever runs a corner route where you stick your corner route at five yards. Stick it at five yards. Five yards, then you start taking your angle and you don't get a very high angle and this guy can cover both of you because of the depth of your route. If Noah Fant pushes this 10 yards and then runs his corner, I just want you to watch this play play out, okay? If he does that, so now he's all the way up here and then running his corner route, can this guy cover him? Absolutely not. It's a walk-in touchdown right there if he gets that depth. Now, I'm not here saying I know the playbook and I know that he's supposed to go deeper than that. I just can't imagine them ever running a corner route at five yards. Those little details are the difference between winning and losing football games. If he's supposed to be at 10 yards, eight yards, taking a higher angle, whatever, you got this opportunity. The play design is there to give you an opportunity if you carry this and you go higher, you get yourself a touchdown. Now, I think Teddy's expecting that. This guy's able to play both, even though he shouldn't be because he's sidestepping this. He's not even turning and running. He should never be able to cover a corner route unless he gets as deep as the corner route. But he's able to cover it here because of the angle and the depth. And now we got to try to force a check down. We throw it into the dirt and we miss an opportunity for an easy touchdown in this game. Okay, here's another one, all right? So this look here, you look outside, press, press. Guessing that this is cover one and what they've been doing, we already talked about it, one cop, okay? One guy playing zone in the middle of the field, man-to-man -man everywhere else, a cop guy in the middle. When teams play cop, usually the inside defenders play outside leverage. You see it right here, outside leverage, outside leverage. Why outside leverage? Because I can let him go inside because I know I got help by number four, on the inside. So I am in good shape right here to let them go inside. But as we talked about before, if I've got two guys going inside and I've got outside leverage, I know I'm going to win on both routes. All I have to do as a quarterback is read number four. Number four stays short, throw it deep. Number four goes deep, throw it short. It's that simple right there, understanding what you're seeing. Okay, so right here, what's number four do? He plays shallow. Where's your throw? Outside leverage. There's your throw, another chance to walk into the end zone or at least be one-on-one -on, -one on this safety. So your read should have been between these two guys. Yes, this guy's man-to-man. -man. Yes, you have an opportunity for that, but that should always come later when you've got two inside breaking routes against one cop. They're playing outside leverage. This guy cannot be right. There's your throw, you see it. We try to force it into the outside. Incomplete pass in the red zone where details are so important, but man, it doesn't get any more open than that, and it should have been fairly easy seeing leverage by these two guys and knowing, based on what they've done earlier in the game, what they like to do, but even in this situation, outside leverage, I know for sure they are not going to let me have the inside and man-to-man -man coverage unless they have some kind of help because that's the easiest throw for a quarterback in football. Misses an opportunity again there to get them into the end zone. All right. I'm not going to say this stuff is easy, okay? Stuff's not easy. 
We're going to run this route here, a little pop, a little swing, and then an in route here. It's a play we call Pepsi. We call Pepsi. All right, so one of two things you got to see as a quarterback. First thing you got to see is you got to ask yourself, do I have a shot at this in route? Based on where this safety is, is that a viable option pre-snap? I need to know that. Have to know that, and I'll show you why in a second. Okay, so I need to know that. Second part is simply understanding, once again, they've got two defenders over here. So if this guy does his job and covers the flat, I've got to beat this defender with the throw. So I have to be ready to throw the football. Got to be ready to throw the football. Ball's got to come out right now. Now, again, I'm not saying that that's easy. That's easy. I'm not saying that's an easy throw right there because it's got to happen fast. But I have to know if, and this is, again, if. If I don't have a shot at this, I've got to know that if I'm reading this side, it's got to go to one of those two guys on time because I know where the problem is on this particular play. So I see movement right there. I'm sticking my foot in the ground, and I am ready to put that on him as soon as he turns. Okay, now we go back, and if we say, well, the in has a shot. I think I can beat the safety with the in. Perfect. So now all I'm looking for, if that's the case, is I'm looking at this defender right here. As soon as this defender widens to take the flat, I'm golden now because now my eyes go to number four, and I've got to be ready to throw it. So in this case, I don't have to be quite as ready to throw the pop as I have to be ready to throw the in. So I've got to be ready to beat that safety and put it on the end right now. So when I get my eyes on this guy, I am set and ready to throw it. If he holds it off and stays inside, I got plenty of time to recover out to this pop because he's the only guy that can take it away, as we said. If he moves lateral right now, I know I'm not going to have a lot of opportunity in the red zone because the safety is not going anywhere. So I think he's got an opportunity. Four starts to match, feet in the ground. Rip this ball right there. That's where your touchdown is. This safety goes three yards deep in the end zone. Noah Fant crosses his face. That's the throw. That's the throw. This guy holds it off. Now we recover back here, and we can be a little bit late on that one now because I know that the guy that's taking that, this, this hook away is the same guy that has to take the in away. And if he took the in away, he's not in a position to take the hook. But red zone, get your feet set, get ready to throw it. That ball, he should be set and ready to rip that ball right now to one of those two guys. Should be out to the pop, should be out to the in. We should have an opportunity to set ourselves up for a touchdown or have a touchdown, hold the football. Now we gotta try to scramble again and make a play and not able to do that. So there's a great example of how important the details are. Details, details, details. To me, it's not always about scheming up these great, wonderful plays because a lot of playbooks have similar concepts to them. But it's the details of how you run things, the details of the routes, releases, depth. All of those little things pay huge dividends. And again, lower levels, you can get, get away with having lesser details because oftentimes one team's better than the other. See that at the college level. Oftentimes one team's more talented than the other. Get away with not being as clean on the details. You get to the NFL level, you better be uh, better with the details than the other team or you're going to find yourself losing because the parity is so great in the National Football League. And great example there, again, wasn't all about the Denver Broncos, although that was our experiment tonight, was, uh, was with the Denver Broncos. But the reason they lost a close football game, in my opinion, was because of the lack of details within that game. And you see it across the league. Teams that are losing teams, details aren't very good. Teams that are winning teams are better with the details and they win because of the little things they do within the course of the game. Just a note for all you quarterbacks out there, all you coaches out there, all you guys designing plays, details are always the most important thing.